True View Podcast. A bunch of different views. <laughs> the boys keep it real, man. I really like listening to them, man. They funny. Yeah. Son. They really speak their truth. What the hell was that? Here, here, here. What it do? What the business is? What's good? It's your boy Mel, and we back in the building again, bringing the barbershop to the box office, baby. Let's go, Wakanda forever. Oh God, this is the one time I really don't want to follow you because I sound like a sellout. Like when you open like that and I start talking, I immediately sound like a sellout. Mm-hmm. Like I, it's the glass. I hear it. I hear it. It's, it's so uncomfortable. Is, is it the glasses or is it the tone? I don't know. They brought up the glasses in there. They like. Oh yeah, I guess <laughs> the glasses make sense too. Um, I'm Jay. I don't think I'm a sellout. I just have a different perspective on things. Um, but I'm here for it. Let's let's have the conversation. Hey Jay, that the 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 color of that wall do something for your shade, man. With the light, put <laughs> that out there. But what's good, people? It's your boy Zo. We back in the building for another one. True View Podcast. Let's get Thank it. you. Yeah, that blue black going hella good today. <laughs> this your nigga, grown man MJ. <laughs> One, two, three, thanks again for tuning in to the True View Podcast. We are back oh, here man. again. Oh, and thank you for meeting us here. All right. Yeah. Right. Oh, oh man. This one um we're revisiting, following up on you know, we keep tabs on our on our episodes. You may have heard us in part one review season one of Woke, which is a Hulu original. Currently, uh season two is currently streaming. Um you can find all ten episodes of season two on um on Hulu. So it's binge eight. away, ladies and gentlemen. It's so episodes. just a quick it's eight episodes. Huh? Eight oh, eight. Episodes. Eight episodes. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, all available on Hulu. And um Woke. What is woke? Keith is I'm not saying Keith, I mean Keith. Keith is an American cartoonist Keith on the Knight. Bird. Say his name. You just did, so we can move on. On the verge of mainstream success it's when right. an when an unexpected event changes his life with a fresh outlook on the world keith must navigate the new voices and ideas that confront and challenge him so basically yeah what that said uh we've been practicing again you know what i'm saying bro like sometimes sometimes it's it'd be i just be ready for this i just be ready for this i'm prepared prepared i'm not practicing i'm prepared All right, so how do you guys think the story developed in comparison to season one? Like, was the where he went as far as trying to become becoming like this, uh, the face uh, of change and wokeism? Is there's show, that? Show, show, start there. But do you think this was a realistic progression from where we were, where we ended off in season no. one? Okay. No. What do you no, think? It was too quick of a catapult? It's not, it doesn't make sense, or it's just not who Well, we ended season, season one with, with the him. Cop, the flick, the flick yeah. of the wrist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. with him yeah. flicking at the cop and him getting locked up or whatever. And I could understand him going, diving against activism from there. Uh, but I felt like there was a there was definitely a change in the pace of it. There was yes. a change in uh, it was a change in writing style, in my opinion, as well. Yes. And uh, I didn't even look up the writers, but I, I just took note that this was done differently than the first one, and it made me seem like I was almost too critical on the first one, almost where it was done that way on purpose, almost. Mm-hmm. And uh, go ahead. No, when you mentioned the writing, one thing I saw, and I'm not using this word to be stereotypical, but there wasn't as much aggression in this season. 
It was more so like an acceptance of the status quo. And when I say aggression, I don't mean like he needed to be more angry, but to end season one in such a defiant and like, I I see your bullshit. I say, fuck your bullshit. I'm not going to stand for your bullshit way. And then you kind of was like, season two took us down the path of kind of like, um, okay, I see it and I, I'll try and play, I'll play the game, but for my own benefit. You see what I'm saying? So I, it, that would be the duller downside of the writing in season two that I saw, but I don't think it was bad. I I, I think I, I took it a different way because I went back and watched the first season and then immediately just followed it up with the second season. So that's a good way to go. Um, When I did that, uh, the the phrase comes to to mind that money doesn't change people; it amplifies you. Um, you were seeing hints of his character in season two, in season one, but he was broke ass motherfucker in season one. Uh, they focused more on uh, black trauma and the uh, and everything in the first season. This one is more we got money and. Uh, now we're going to focus on not just black trauma. We're going to see, we're going to incorporate everybody. We got the white guilt. Yeah. We got the. But that's what the, that's where I'm oh, saying no, you're, he's oh, playing no. the game. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, because that was my issue with the first one. It's kind of like I've seen this coming and, and mm-hmm. I've seen that this, uh, I guess, shaping it to be what it was, but to the see pivot. it right now was, wasn't bad. Uh, but it does have. A, a, a sour taste in my mouth as far as me appreciating this as uh for what it is and i think we got in that conversation because jay brought it up through these type of shows help change the narrative and uh i quickly said no and to me it's like you saying uh the more money you have in your pocket you're just gonna be more of who you are and these types of shows to me kind of uh don't even work towards the narrative that is actually being fought in the streets today. Mm-hmm. That's not right. where I, I fall off with these. Uh, well, I think like with in this in the woke era and in every kind of an organization, I think there's don't deals. Don't say the happen. woke era, dog, because there's been people yeah woke on this planet that's walking public enemy seventy eight yeah, years old. Yeah. So. That's that's fair, but what we've constantly seen is the either there's corruption in the organizations this that are the age of social justice. Okay, mm. so during this age of social justice, right? <laughs> <laughs> we we've we're constantly seeing parodies. I mean, it, uh, Atlanta just did this parodies mm. of like what it's really like in these social justice organizations. Atlanta and, shit a little more. Little Atlanta was stuff, worse. Man. Like it was it was fucked up. But what you see is like there's got to be deals made, and that's where I say like he's like more so trying to play the play into the bullshit or like try to play the game as opposed to being from. I thought he would have gone into a more defiant role, but in doing that, it it does raise some questions, right? See, see, I picked up that he was trying to. You you get this with a lot of the people nowadays. They're trying to please everybody. And not piss off anybody. But to get help for your own... Right. So let right there, Lamel, right? So isn't there something to be said that in order for you to receive the help for your needs, you have to have compassion and empathy for other no, people? Oh, see, that's what I'm saying. And, so, okay. and, and like, like what Mel was saying with the money, when the money comes, what happens to the Blacks part of the story just vanishes. And that's what happens in real life. You see what I'm saying? When right. resources come, it's, it, it, all, it all of a sudden becomes people of color. And then in this situation, yeah. it was the homeless people that push the blacks' agenda but, back. But my only my only thing with that, that Mike, 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 was that what you were saying? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. Go ahead. No, no I'm like, saying. Was, go ahead, man. I was I saying the only thing that ties that back to season one is that's who he generally was in the beginning of season one. One of the homeless people. No, like no. he was. He was. He didn't see color. He was one of those. I don't see color. I just Before see this. The cop whooped his ass. And then the cop whooped his ass, and he got woke. So he was going through with that trauma throughout season one, and then season two. Now he has money backing him, so he go. He reverts back to the person that he was in the beginning. And I, I, I think that just kind of, you know, what I'm saying, uh, reinforces what 
the show was intended to be about versus what people are, are making it to be about. You know what I'm saying? They're missing who he was before he had his awakened moment. Mm-hmm. Are we are we that awakened moment, right? Are, are we on being unfair and thinking that it was to be a, a activist for black people versus an activist, period? Because the season two is him just being an activist. They re- mm-hmm. over and over they no one ever mentions him being black in it. It's just constantly the act, Keith Knight, the activist, right? Mm-hmm. So, do you think that we're being unfair in making that assumption that that's who he was going to be an activist for? His blackness. Yeah, a black, a black activist, a black um, activist. No, he. Uh, no, uh, that's what we do, though. If we see, <laughs> if we see, I'm just being honest. If we see a black person go through some shit. We picking them up and we putting them on. Look, black people trauma. Like this is black people fucked up shit. They doing this to all black people. Like this, and you got a motherfucker like say say like a Tiger Woods, uh, when he gets on and everything. Black people, yeah, black people, black people, and then he get up there and on some. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not black. I'm uh, um whatever he is. See the be- the the analogy that I think of when I when I make that comparison is, is post Malone. Like you come mm-hmm. in doing hip hop and rap and then all of the, you get the money, you get the popularity and now you're doing country music or pop. Like it shows what you, you use the black struggle or you use the black plight to catapult you to notoriety. And then you go, you suddenly forget that you made the promises or that you wanted to change these things. Or maybe they become less important to you. You see what I'm saying? Because you're being exposed to so many different struggles. Or maybe they just uh-huh. used up what they what they plan. Like that was the plan all along. Just use them to get here and catapult to something else. Like it's that's business. A pivot. Make the pivot. That's business. That's what it is. I I don't know. I mean, I do think that the intentions were there. Because when when you all right. Assuming that he was an activist for black causes, where do you start? Like the it, black issues in America are drowning. Where do you, you want to talk about unfair incarceration? You want to talk about wage gaps? You want to talk about red like, lining. red li- like voting but rights? You, where do you start if you when you get woke, <laughs> so to speak? And they touched on that. Yeah. And that's why he went with the alternative, which was to create a name within himself before he could tackle this. Because you got to remember, there's there's millions of people, not millions, there's hundreds of people before him that are trying or have been tackling those issues. See, I think he went more so along the lines of, all right, what what is like something that I could actually <laughs> to help with? Because a lot of these causes are so bigger than. And then you're yeah exactly yeah like you can't even put it you in. got all the corporations that's just sitting back waiting to make money off of the causes so it's like shit who do you tap in with you know what i'm saying for real it's like you damn near got to keep that shit in the streets you know what i'm saying and not the streets literally but you know out of the motherfucking offices yeah i mean like i think it's fucked up for me when when I with organizations like when you go to like you know grocery stores or whatever and they say do you want to make this donation, well I know the the <laughs> the store is just gonna make a donation in that lump sum, keep pocket the money you did and then make a donation in that lump sum and then get the tax write off for the donation. Are they benefiting corporate wise? Is their corporate greed being benefited by this? Yeah, but at the same know. time, is this other group getting the help? So that's, that's why, you like. know what I'm saying? Me personally, I'd rather give my donation, you know what I'm saying, to a homeless person on the street than a goddamn corporation or, you know what I'm saying, one of them companies. And yeah, that's but my when opinion. You find, when, you see him, when you see that homeless person and he's with the rest of his friends or whatever and they count the stacks of money that you, that's more than you've seen in a week or two. That's, does that change your perspective? Get it how you live. You want to pivot. Yeah, it make you want to pivot. Like, man, I'm doing something wrong, goddamn. 
<laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be wearing these Jordans free. around. Like, yeah, he getting that tax free joint. I'm out here working for the man. <laughs> <laughs> He's slapping me around. I don't know, man. I I think that I to go back to the original question. I do believe this was a natural progression. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. They, I think I, they I, did the they did the script well. I think uh, going just just from my perspective of watching season one into season two, they did they did a pretty. A uh, realistic jump, I guess, uh, with the the task that he that he was presented with. So, Mike seems to disagree, but I mean, no, I, mean I, I agree that the writing and everything was done well. I just don't like it, bro. I mean, it don't speak to me. Let me just say it like that. All right, so let's and, let's try uh, to find an angle. I, I try to find uh, humor in it, but it's not the humor is so almost slapstick it's, it's kind of like it really don't it's very you know uh saying? it's very yeah. uh what you gonna call it what's that movie? watered that down thing? palatable it's, it's very wayne's world yeah it's very uh that was a good movie yeah it's, it's very uh yeah girl next door yeah. yeah well i think for me I, I think without one character i wouldn't like it you know what I'm saying? You take T-Murph like out of this, this shit yeah. is trash. I think yeah. if you take T-Murph out the shit, you know what I'm saying? Oh, no, he's, no, no, no. He's by far the worst, dog. <laughs> nah, T-Murph I, is I'm fucking with T-Murph on here. Is the black dude with the beard? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? And when, I'll save it for the weekend. But, uh, yeah, no, I don't, I, 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 I think T-Murph is cool, but his, his character's antics and what his ambitions are and, his and everything is just kind of real like lame brain for me. That's bec- that's probably because you're looking at it like it's a stereotypical like trope or some shit like that. Yeah. Chucking like, and jiving like a little bit. Adult. Yeah. I was going to say, I think I fucked with uh, the white guy more than I fucked with uh, homeboy. <laughs> See, I didn't even look Gunther. at it for the I, humor. I fucked with Gunther more than I fucked with Clovis. Yeah, I didn't really. I thought, I thought Gunther and Ayana just talking oh, yeah. points, talking points, and angles that they brought to the show are a lot more diverse and a lot more well written out. His is like, would you guys call this a more. dramedy series versus a comedy series? Then no, this or is, is still know, comedy. It's, it's still comedy. Definitely. comedy. This is definitely trying to lean into comedy with talking bottles and all that other stuff. And I'm kind of yeah. mad they took that aspect out of it. Yes. I wish you would have had more of that. That's it. I more was just what? about to touch on that. Like, like that was a big short bus for me because that was like yeah. part of the draw. I like that. Was the know, best part of the first season. The animation. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Well, that and it. it the other voices. Like, the voices yeah. and the Man. comedians they were using. I might have to drop my scores because that was a big. Uh, that was a big thing. Like they they yeah. brought it in towards the end. Like somebody reminded them, like, hey, you know, he's supposed to be, you know, talking the shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> but they they weren't as as present as they were in the first season, and it it helped as well. Uh, depict that he was going through that trauma from the cop. So you were or, seeing or not that. even that, just understand how he was uh internalizing everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Helped yeah. Help us un- connect with that a little bit too. So that was that was a big shortcoming for me though in in the writing. Like they didn't uh they didn't give my, my man JB smooth enough shine, I don't think. And uh, he was the only one they gave shine though. I know. He was really the only one, like yeah, they, they should have let because it, it that was yeah. That was a big that was a big letdown for me. They didn't do that more. I don't know. I uh, pretty soon I kind of just looked at I I got locked into the storyline of like when you know your intent is to you know be put people in a better position than they were or to help. Your intent mm-hmm. is to help overall. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. And that's where I get fucked up. Right, because it's like, yeah, there's sell like for for the wife. For example, the issue in this one was the Wi-Fi, five G, five G, right? So now they're gonna make San Francisco or this, yeah, San Francisco, this like Wi-Fi hub where internet is accessible. So like low income 
kids in low income housing or whose parents can't afford to pay cable bill or, you know, for internet, they are able to do the research they need to be able to like succeed in school and go beyond it. And for the homeless person that's on the street, like, yeah, there's a lot of people there that are there for unfortunate reason and get stereotypes and profiled by the fucking cops. But at the same time, they, what if they catch one of a predator that's been raping people that's living on the streets and among the homeless, right? Like when there's some, doesn't some good outweigh the ben- the bad or the fucked up part of it? I'm just, I'm curious. I'm not saying yeah. I believe it does because I honestly don't know. That's all a matter of perspective. Yeah, because you can't control, you know what I'm saying, the aspects yeah. of that shit because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be good or bad with good and vice versa. It's like shit. Right. Yeah, so that's why I was kind of like, I thought it was kind of fucked up that like he was getting so much pushback from the community because... Well, I'm gonna be able to please everybody. Time, I'm like, yo, oh, sure. that family that's hard up for shit, hard up on life. The cops are harassing them the same way. They're just being asshole cops. So it's like, it that just, would, I didn't know. I still didn't come to a conclusion. Yeah, I don't think it was meant for for us to come to a conclusion. It, it was more so meant to bring up that somebody gonna be pissed off. It don't matter. <laughs> no matter what you do, somebody gonna be pissed off. But uh, one of the, another shortcoming I wanted to bring up, they dropped the cop shit. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like the, the, the <laughs> yeah, whole bro. issue in this one switched the entire narrative and story. They completely like, dropped that shit though. Yeah. Like, it, you see them in the beginning, like watch your back, and that was it. That was. It. <laughs> I was like, well, I think there's gonna be a revisit to it. You think they need more seasons of this? Absolutely. Oh yeah, they'll give them another one. Yeah. I think. That was one thing. Or, uh, I mean, hell, do we got any any other? Because what I'm gonna say now uh, lead us into the look at me. Uh, we, can we, we got any more shortcomings? Uh, we, can, we can continue the conversation. We're going to look at me. All right. Look at me now. Look at me now. Oh. I thought they did a wonderful job with um, just writing it in a way that makes it palatable for our Caucasian comrades. Um, they did a good job with, with adding in the humor and stuff. Like it's not going to fix the situation, but it puts it in a, in a way that they can watch this and see the absurdity in, in a lot of stuff that goes on. <laughs> able to start the conversation at least. Well, homelessness is not is really like a technically like a neutral. I look at it like a neutral issue because for, for it's hard to even, re- yeah, that's hard even to, a major thing. yeah. And then but, the five G and corruption type situation. I feel like again, it's a neutral issue. It's like you're either a conspiracy nut or you're not. Like so, I think there was nothing when you say make it palatable. They just. They you didn't even focus on anything. homelessness. They didn't. No, I'm saying like, but what I'm saying, the issues that were presented, the causes the that, that were presented were uh, non-racial. The differences, yeah, the, the differences that we see in each other uh, between white and black. Um, they were the. Uh, I was one episode the white, with the white dude. The white allies. Not understanding. Yep. And him the white missing, allies. Yeah. They had the. Uh, I was, two episodes right the the group with uh what was it the 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 black guy saying like look man we gotta let the white people get their guilt off and all of this stuff and yeah this that, and the other you have the activist uh woman who feels that she's writing you know for pro-black people and it turns out to be a bunch of white allies is there yeah. was a lot in here you probably just skimmed over it and we'll just focus no on. what no 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 okay so all of that stuff, right, is nothing. It's stuff that like you see in Dear White People on Netflix. Right? White people aren't watching Dear White People. I understand that, but it's it's the the auxiliary issues of just like being black and versus white. The ma- there was no major issue here that would challenge a white person. 
this wasn't meant to challenge. Again, if you listen to what season I said, one, Mel, you can I can I'm you listen saying, to my point? If you listen to what I said though, because you're making a, a, a you're saying you made they mail you saying they made this season more palatable for, for white, white people. people. And yeah. what I'm saying is that's because they didn't put anything in here to challenge white people. They just repeated shit that black people have been saying this is wrong. These traits about you are fucked up. In season one, it was a white cop that tackled one of the quote unquote good ones. And mm -hmm. then it was the cover up. Those are things that like for the past that have been in white people's face for the past fucking nine, 10 years. It's uh, in their face. I'm saying like as far as recency okay. shit. It's like in their face constantly, and they are at any view of support to the police or anything is considered a, you're automatically make you a racist. So that's an in your face challenge. This season, there was none. There was nothing to that magnitude of a challenge. So there was it wasn't even about palatable. It was no well, that was my was issue with the first season as well, Jay. I don't feel like there was a challenge involved in the first yeah, season. There was no challenges. Okay, and, uh, I disagree. Remember, I was calling the uh <laughs> It's, uh, racism was watered down. I was saying this is a man-made sandwich of racism, mm -hmm. and uh, it was they touched on a lot of light points, and it never went beyond the surface in this in the first season. I said all of that. Right. And going into this one, it was just like, okay, it was like exposing that. Okay, now you're woke. Let's make fun of you being woke almost in this season. That's kind of how I took. See, for me, I look at it like in when I like the white people that I just I talk to about shit, right? Or not even the white people I talk to about shit, but like I think nobody wants to be called a racist. It's a fucking scary word for white people to be called a racist, right? Unless you're like one of the ones that are on the road right now, they are still protesting that Trump isn't president. But you just don't want to be called a racist. And I think in, in season one, we saw bl a white cop, black man, aggression and unjustified and unjust, you know, and like arrest. And that's a theme that has been constant up until the point of that season's creation. So it's an uncomfortable reminder for white people, I felt like, right? This season, I don't think there was anything to that effect. Bro, I don't think white people turn it, on their TV to be uncomfortable, bro. So right. Think, but that's why I'm saying, like, there was nothing TV. about this being palatable. It was just a show. It was it nothing. Was, it was palatable about them uh, taking over the black fight for us, pretty much. It's, it's, it's a lot there. You just have to go back and watch it with different eyes because okay. you just kind of pass over a lot of argument, man. even even using the the asian girl you know what i'm saying to do the shit she wasn't asian the mexican chick oh damn she looked asian yeah she was definitely spanish so god damn it <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> but uh no they even brought it up in the corporate thing with Damn, they God said the, the ethnic training yeah, wow. or whatever they were. Right. I mean, they was right. eating the, it was eating margaritas, eating margaritas, tacos. Hey man, hey man, I watched, I watched this shit months ago. I watched this shit months ago. I forgot. Yeah. They, but they were at her parents' <laughs> restaurant. It was a Mexican. Y'all yeah. gonna get off me? Y'all gonna get off me? <laughs> hey man, I watched it when it first came out. Man. <laughs> But no, nah, man, they, they brought that up with a uh, homeboy that was in the, the board meeting when they did the uh, Martin Luther King keep Wi-Fi free or something. Right. He right. wasn't even black. Right. <laughs> they brought yeah, that up. That 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 I, looked, yeah. I took that more as a knock against like the discomfort shit we get like when we see Nancy Pelosi kneeling in kente cloth. Like that is their what? analogy. No. This, That's the same exactly. thing. No, it isn't. They're asking somebody about black culture who isn't even of black culture. Right, and their the view thing. on black culture is standing up and saying, make Wi-Fi free. I had a dream that Wi-Fi would be free. No, using Martin Luther King is absurd. Exactly. Yeah. So is kneeling in fucking kente cloth when the topic at end is voters' rights. What the fuck are you talking about? You're telling me yeah. that wasn't absurd? It was absurd. It was definitely yes. absurd. Okay, then. That's all I'm saying. It's not comparable, though. 
Okay. All right. We agree to disagree. It was yeah, it was a, it was a rough analogy. We'll have to <laughs> It was, just, it was hard for everybody to get to. Do <laughs> y'all think them uh, putting the chip in the shoe was a shot at all these fat ass shoes these shorties be wearing, these Balenciagas and shit? <laughs> I don't know no. because homie trashed Put the air bubble. Like, Put, the air bubble shit. Put the air <laughs> bubble in it. Man, these shoe selections, these shorties be having is absurd, bro. Hey, man. Hey, but they feet going to be a lot better than ours because they look like they orthopedically sound. <laughs> <laughs> and they paying $800 for them bitches. Like, what? Yeah, nah, they ain't for the fly. They ain't for the, I'm be with Shaq up in Walmart. Give me some, <laughs> some, <laughs> some, uh, strawberries. <laughs> Dang. Charlie Brown's baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what other lick of bees we got, man? Wait, Jay, Jay was looking like he might have went to go buy a period. He had to <laughs> on the period like. No, he hidn't he hidn't return. He he deleted it out the cart <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just do high end. Uh, I got a uh look at me. Man, when they first had a show T Murph. When he came out the room, did y'all think he was on some uh CGI shit, like some body double shit? That shit was looking yeah. weird, man. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember that. They just wanted to focus in. No, they like, look, I did some work. I did. <laughs> like me and I my did. girl was looking at like, I don't know if that's his beard making it look like that or like his head was on another body though. And uh homeboy, homeboy put some work in the gym and he put that in the contract. If I come back. I gotta take my shirt off. I like how they made fun of that. They was rubbing toast on that, bro. I was like, come on, man. <laughs> no, nah, man. I don't know, man. I I thought this was cool. I, I I could do without a third season, quite honestly. Though. I don't well, see where they would take it. It would be I the redemption. It would be the redemption story, getting back to the roots. This is like that's what I'm saying. Like this, they the the writing pace of this reminds me of every fucking like I was nothing. Then I rose to something. Then I realized it's not all it's supposed to be. So I fall back down, and now I'm going on this journey to be grounded and get back to the real issues at hand. And we're gonna get an episode of him coming back from being on the road with you know whatever, and then. Finding another another black issue to tack onto that is gonna continue, or realizing the fact that nobody cares about this shit anymore. Like it just yeah, no, man, they it, eat that shit. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like it's gonna that's that's the natural shit. Or because unless another tragedy happens, I don't feel as though people are gonna give a shit about it. No, because I think this shooter this era. was a good button for this uh, two seasons and out because you raise uh, the wokeness rather uh, with season one and then you clown the wokeness on season two. So just be done with it. I don't think it needs to go and drag into a third season. I get what Jay is saying and what he's saying is 100% correct uh, that that's the, the progression of this storyline, yeah. you know, so to speak, where it could maybe go for uh, three, four seasons. But to me, yeah. I don't think it, I don't think it is uh, groundbreaking enough, and I don't think the other characters have a profound uh, addition to the storyline. Yeah. No, this, thing. this, this is the equivalency of mids, I guess. As the who mids. Like how New York is with the shoes and shit. They'd be like, don't wear the mids. Like, this is just uh, mids. God damn it. This is mids. I'm going to some young people Because I was like, man, I don't I don't really see a problem with mids, but I got I own me a couple mids. Uh, according to distractify.com. What is it? Huh? What is this? Distractify.com. Was that the way of uh, yeah, it's a, into it's interrupting? A, it's an online blog. They're talking about season three. 
for this for this woke. Okay. They're saying uh, that it's already greenlit. It's it's like no, they're saying like because the it doesn't seem like people it's a very take it or leave it result from season two. So season two ended and it, the score on the the current score is like seventy four percent or whatever. So it's not enough to cancel it, and it's it's not enough to renew it. So it's just kind of like there. It's, it's yeah, it's, it's very yeah, it's very <laughs> minced. Side side note, we gotta start blogging because whoever the fuck they are, that's a good ass take that we could have been on. Yeah. Um, but they did point out other stuff that came out within the same time frame, like Emily in Paris have already been renewed for seasons three and four. So it may not be a good look. People like Paris. Yeah, baguettes and shit. Yeah. Um I don't know, man. We I don't know. To- like for me, like I think my angle in watching the show because the second we got we came and I saw him talking to a homeless dude, I knew we we weren't gonna be the focus wasn't gonna be on black people. It, and I see the with the point in what you guys are saying as far as like you know, it's the there's they're telling this little tidbit uh, as far as like you know people occupying black struggle or black trauma for their own gain and then they're telling this little side bit about the saviors meant the saviorism or whatever the white savior shit and why you don't necessarily need to know all our shit like you don't need to watch with a watch clock to have empathy for black people i had that but it helps so many but it helps but it helps <laughs> you but don't it watch your legs but hey, I'm saying, to me, I think the bigger issue is this altruistic view of of in the woke in this social justice era that requires that everybody wins, and Possibly. they don't see the benefit in doing in a little bad have like in a little bad for the betterment of the good. You see what I'm saying? Because we live in a country where we probably drone bomb neighborhoods with kids in it for our own freedom so we could say what the fuck so we could say fuck the president and criticize him for that shit isn't that offset i think that to me is the bigger issue in here because politically that's one of the read the the you know the downsides for blacks in america i don't know like what you mean politically that's the downside the need so like I feel like there's could be a guy right now, right? And he could like come across and say he has a plan to fix every issue for black people in America, right? But his wife is white. And Dr. Umar does one breakfast club interview and is fuck that dude for life. Right? We'll shoot ourselves. We'll see the the there's people that come with a plan and a benefit. It's like They'll kill the messenger and forget that the message was what you've been asking for this whole fucking time. I've well, seen things. Uh, you see what I'm saying? So it's like that's no. I think it's. I think it's just uh, what I like to call a bit of the tribal deflect or tribal uh, uh, reflex. What do you basically, mean? By, oh, okay, okay. I think I understand. basically the uh, you know common folks who don't necessarily view politics in the way of this is that that is this they got to take the sleight of hand from here and there people just see it in black and white and a lot of times uh white wife or not these people paperwork don't come back good where they've already been online for a bunch of fuck shit you know what i'm saying right like kamala was already online for a bunch of fuck shit before it was said she had a white wife and that was brought out white husband already I mean, it ain't white husband. <laughs> Damn, bro. I was like, wait a minute. I missed that one. <laughs> my bad. I'm thinking, of, I'm thinking of my auntie Lightfoot out there. My bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. yeah, I, I can't <laughs> touch like, it. We still in the jungle over here with her. We can't. Hey, hold yeah. on. Hold on. <laughs> uh, but, uh, auntie Lightfoot. <laughs> oh, God. Leave that woman alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm thinking, you know, it. I think what you're saying is is correct like you know the optics of somebody that's trying to help or trying to stand for something that's in a position where they can help 
uh, is often looked at just this skepticism, bro, and it's, and it's hard for us to lean in on it because the transparency has never been there, bro. Bottom except line. with drug dealers. Like, what? that's the one, except with drug dealers. And huh? what? Except with drug dealers. Look. No. You, I'm not going to make the argument. We can move on. We can move on. We can move on. <laughs> not true, move sir. On. <laughs> Definitely not true, sir. You knew a drug dealer was a drug dealer, right? And you knew who he was. You knew what that meant with whether he was ruthless or whatever. But you knew in your community, none happens unless he says so. And when there's justice to be had, he's the one that's going to carry it out a lot of the times. And so when there's an upstanding community, and I wish a motherfucker would tell me why shit gonna go around here where I live. Like <laughs> I was gonna say, and then if you really, really knew, you knew who the white man was that was over there, drug dealer that was really pulling the strings. But I mean, I don't know, man. I know like certain parts of Kingston are safer with an area done. That's all I'm saying. They, t- they, t- <laughs> <laughs> they took they took that nigga down and now everybody just a gang and they just killing everybody and that motherfucker when he was there yeah shit was fucked up a little coke was getting sold allegedly a little guns were getting moved allegedly but shit was like motherfuckers could move because he wasn't allegedly. making it hot allegedly got the allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm saying. No, As right. all what I'm you're saying, saying is, is, is true for Chicago and many exactly because I'm, I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna say allegedly allegedly the histories that I've allegedly been told of this alleged city, right? Is that the real name? When <laughs> <laughs> when certain people you know may who may or may not be hey, hey, they named like after a vacuum media cleaner, stuff. When those people were in church, shit just was moving safer. Motherfuckers allegedly, did. allegedly, allegedly. I'm just saying, you could go downtown allegedly with your windows you down. Go allegedly, down. you can still go downtown without the hammer. I cannot confirm or deny anything. Allegedly, either. anyway. So that's all I'm saying. I think that <laughs> for me, that for me was my my main focal point, and that's why I feel like sometimes I feel like I. To black people, I come off as a sellout because I realize you, you, you have don't. to be. Let no, no, we don't need to justify it. But I get no, it. I'm I just get saying, it. I'm just, I'm, a, I'm just <sighs> letting you don't because you come from a different upbringing. You weren't really raised in this shit like uh, Mike and I. Were, yeah, I so. think the, I think part, I think Mike had said it once. He was like, "Dude, you have a culture. <laughs> like, yes. you came from." <laughs> You know your culture. You have an We're island, a place. Our yeah. culture over here. You, and even though it yeah. wasn't originally yours, like y'all motherfuckers, like it was you unified. Everybody was you. Even the motherfuckers that was white was you. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, y'all was good at hiding. Our people <laughs> got caught. <laughs> um, and it's y'all, just the size y'all of Texas. Y'all would whoop our ass and hide and go seek. Apparently. So oh god, oh, we were bad. We were bad. <laughs> We were both. I don't know, man. All this shit made me think was that Hillary should have won. Whoa. That's Whoa. where I went back. Whoa. I just Whoa. went back to that. Whoa. Hillary should have won. Hillary should have fucking won. Life would have been better. It wouldn't have been what? no better, man. Life would have been better, bro. Life would have been better. Master. It don't matter how they... Oh, do it, life life would have been better, bro. Massa is massa. It don't matter how you... Like, how it look. That's this. It's okay. Bill would have been up in there playing the saxophone, you know. He wasn't all that great himself. All right, <laughs> what are you talking about? He wasn't all that great himself, but he didn't he win for a reason. <sighs> Where do we want to? Is oh, we want to do a rename? Oh, this have been the second term of Hillary in your eyes, huh? One hundred percent. Would have voted for her again. I love them death row pants, skirt suits, bro. She would have been fire. Fashionista of the decade. No, I'm off. That motherfucker dressed like uh, Gilbert. What was that commercial? That cartoon with the mother had to tie that flipped up. <laughs> Gilbert. Gilbert, did, Gilbert in, uh, <laughs> in the newspaper. That mother had to tie that flipped up. That's how that mother dressed. God damn it, man. 
Uh, the cartoon? <laughs> Rename that movie. Oh, god damn. Alright, this is uh, Mimosa March. Mimosa who? March. Mimosa I got, March. I got one. Cheap soap. What's down in Farstil? Whipped cream. No, you sound Whip. good. So we just gonna walk over cheap soul. Cheap soul. Yeah. Yeah. S O L. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's a good one. It, bro. Sometimes I got some heat. Yeah. Like, give me my yeah. props. I didn't hear it, brother. I'm sorry. I said whipped cream. <laughs> I see where you're going with that. <laughs> Asian uh, talk. Shout out to Zoe. Foot loose. Man, <laughs> I was y'all. <laughs> <laughs> that foot juice. That's what I was gonna say. This is the foot juice. Um, <laughs> Balenciagas. The oh, the bunion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big shoes to fill. Sock puppets. Um, She's stepping in the name. <laughs> what are those? <laughs> Uh, stepping uh, in the name of justice. Rip, rip phones. Kool Aid mm-hmm. kicks. No reception. I'm telling you, bro. I'm like, bang bang. Whoa. Just Whoa. saying, shooting off the hip with it. No, all right. all right. I can't be. I can't. I. I just can't be myself on this podcast. You know. No, you do your thing, huh? Yeah, man. Let me live. Let me live sometime. <laughs> uh, don't do that. Don't don't do that. People know what you do when you do that. Don't do that. That was that was just a oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, I'm gonna go cry in this Corolla. In the Corolla. G3. Uh Yo, speaking of 5G free, you've heard that song fuck um fuck nigga free with the shorty from I think they sound like they from Memphis. And she's like I'm F R F U C K F R E E free free. That's why I ain't got to worry about no nigga cheating on me. You heard that shit? No. I've heard I've heard the little girl remix it. She's like I'm F R E E and she was talking about uh the kids watching the kids yeah watching kids you know I'm saying that. <laughs> oh, badass little kids badass little kids i'm just saying but man. uh this is uh wake and bake wake and bake um this is sneaker con mm. Mm. i'm telling you this is my room bro you talk about the shoe this game is, uh, yeah, it's a shoe game crazy <laughs> Sold out. This this is shoe game crazy. Yeah. <laughs> shoe game, okay, shoe yes. game crazy. Um, yeah, I got sold, sold out. out. I like cheap soul better than sold out. Okay. The cheap soul uh, got double and tied dress as far as this nigga took the little cheap ass money. Yeah. yeah. This nigga, uh, cause two hundred fifty racks in in uh, San Francisco ain't sure. <laughs> <laughs> Have you lived out there? Or you, but you spend time. I lived there. out there. No, that's one of the most expensive communities in the nation. Yeah, it ain't but nine black people. They said yeah. <laughs> it's Silicon Valley, though, right? Like, <clears throat> I don't know. San, San Francisco, one of the most expensive zip codes in the nation. The, but you don't work out there, right? I worked at like the uh, well, we do like the 49ers and like the uh, baseball games. Out there. Oh, okay. The Aryan race. Nah, what? The oh, Aryan I race. Didn't yell that? No. That's what, that's what, that's what the paper was. The Bay Aryan. The Bay Aryan. Oh, I see what you. Oh, I see what you did. <laughs> he said, "I'm not getting yelled at." <laughs> Oh, um, right, let's, let's pick one. I like um, I like Sneaker Con and I like Cheap Soul. Those nah, are my Cheap Soul probably be the one. Yeah, I cheap. like Cheap Soul and Shoe Game Crazy. 
the shoe game crazy shoe game fire cheap soul it is all right (laughs) 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 all right ladies and gentlemen um the official rename for woke season two is going to be cheap soul and the final score for um this one is going to be a three Find out one, two, three. three. I feel like we are constantly giving things three. So let me explain to you guys. Like we, like we said, we do not round down, and sometimes it's a high, it's a high three, but a lot of the times there's in just enough floss. It is not. It's a. It's not easy to make a really good piece of entertainment, and we're honest about shit. So. Yeah, this right here was uh mid. Even the everybody's saying this is mid. It's not just us though. It's not us. It, it didn't hit. It just like I said from the first one, it didn't hit. And I guess they tried to uh, go the males route and lean into the comedy. And as I said to me, the comedy was slapstick. More more slip slapsticks, Wayne World type of uh, comedy. So then- which was a great was it, movie, by the way. You think the first one was because of the time that it got released and it was just riding it? It was definitely it. timing. And then uh, I'm not sure how long it was. It wasn't that long between the two. I mean, it was about yeah. maybe a year, year and a, a half, year, two a year, years. A year or so. And uh, I think the timing helped the first one. I think the resolution of what happened during that time affected this one. Mm. Mm. That's deep. Do you think the fact of uh BLM right now going through that shit with the stolen mud like yeah, the resolution, the all the shit. <laughs> oh shit, my bad. That holding gang money to her baby I'm, daddy I'm, and everything. At least I'm the feds, my bad. I ain't mean it. <laughs> no, nah, yeah. she gave money to her baby daddy and everything, dog. Bruh, she spread the love though, bro. Bro, that's she spread right, the love, bro. bro. I'm so tired. And again, again, not to shit on you, Jay. Oh, shit, shit on me. No, this motherfucker's an immigrant, dog. This motherfucker's yeah. not. She I know. Not a, uh, a true, yeah, she wasn't here for the, the long God. haul. Right? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it be, it be, that's what I'm saying. When the money comes along, they do the niggas wrong. That's how it happens, bro. This motherfucker busted rhymes in this one. That's how Bars. it happens every time, bro. Oh, God, the money said. come along, they do the niggas wrong, bro. And, Bars. and and that's what this series showed me. So I I, I appreciated it because, like Lamel said, if you sat back and watched it, it on the on the surface, I mean on uh, underneath of what was being said, that was all I saw was when the money come along, all the shit about nigga shit was gone, bro. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, no, I understood. I don't think, I think the misunderstanding is like that wasn't lost on me. I just felt like the bigger focal point was the idea of, you know, is some bad worth the good? And because I, because if you, if I, you know, going off of your perspective in season one, we all saw it going this way. I don't think the, this prog- that's why I think we said it wasn't a shock in how it progressed. This was, was we all knew was, they were gonna it was decent writing. It was good yeah, writing. they were gonna like they're good. gonna have to forget about it because that's what every cause does. That's why Black Lives Matter turned into tra- Black Trans Life Matter, but then it turned into Black Trans Left Handed Rights Matter. Then it's Black Gay Rights. Like it's the, the everybody wants to fucking get their day in the struggle bus. They shine. Like, yeah, There's, yeah, and I'm like, you realize we were, you're fighting and arguing over who has the worst? What the fuck? Everybody no, just needs to chill out. Fighting, arguing over what resources are being funneled in through this shit. And who gets okay, it if you, just, if you just chill out, go to the motel and do some shrooms, everybody will be fine. Where's the drop? Ladies and gentlemen, this episode of the True View Podcast has been brought to you by nobody yet. But if somebody want to fucking sponsor us, we would really appreciate it because, you know, we like money and we want nice things. Um, so and we can forget about the calls. 
And like, but we're not gonna tell you. We can forget like, about the cause as well. What cause? My cause. Yeah. I need to pay rent. Oh, fucking yeah. cause. Yeah. Yeah. I got yeah. a car note. <laughs> cause I got a kid that needs food. What the fuck you mean, cause? The, the, and as always, check out where the vibes stay venti. Um, website coming soon. Uh, all your home DIY, the core needs, all that jazz. Um, real quick before we get out of here, are we gonna recommend season two to anyone? If anyone asks you, like, should they follow through with it? Do we tell them to no, yay? Should they follow through with more it's seasons of this? Oh, or no, 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 no. I'm saying, like, if you tell like oh, some of us season one and like, really in recommendation, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was again, like, it, it didn't, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. It's right in the middle. So it was just enough uh, little comedy in there to where it's, it's palatable for me to watch it with anybody. They did enough touching on different topics where we can we can start conversations at least. And they did it. Much of that from it though. What's that? So I don't get much of that from it, but go ahead. I ain't just stuff on you. Yeah, no, I, uh, you know, at least conversations can be started. But you do have to dig deep into what the hell is going on there. Uh, you do have to dig deep into what's going on. So, yeah, I would I would recommend it. I I don't know if I'm gonna rewatch this unless they come out with another one, just so I can you know power gotcha. through. Yeah. I think they are. I think they're. I uh, I wouldn't recommend it though. But I I would. I'm locked in because I like to see how shit ends. I think there will be a season three. And I think if they bring the pops back in season three, you get a season four. Only if it's foot nut on somebody again. Well, see, for me, it stopped being about a message and uh, definitely became more of a show. And that's why you can kind of recommend this to folks. Mm -hmm. uh, Rewatching, I'm not really diving back into it just because I'm more about the message, I guess. When it comes to uh, things that try to tackle these issues, so to speak, you know, right. and, and it's, I seem like I seem like I got none of that out of this second season. Really, you know, what I'm saying it really drained. It was drained the juice. It drained the juice out of the message, like out of the foot. Yeah. It drained the juice out yeah, of the yeah, exactly. It was a pus bump. Oh, God. oh God, Why Jesus, say that? image, bro. That's a bigger word. That is a trigger word. <laughs> Nasty. Ah, you can see it. You can see it. Oh, God. And that's ah. all I see in the background now. That's all I see. What it got on his shirt? <laughs> did this nigga's foot, did this nigga's foot not on me? Oh, no. It had its moments, man. <laughs> no, it's got moments in here. That's why I say you can recommend it for somebody to watch. Uh, yeah. Because I don't think it leans into anything that's like, like you guys are saying as far as a uh, soapboxy or anything like that. Yeah, it's uh, cookie cutter. Yeah, this this is cookie cutter. It's very surface. Like the male said, I will. Like I said, what the male said, they leaned into the comedy on the second season a little more, and I think uh, having the uh, the father who came in, Mister uh, what's the name, Isaiah Whitlock. I thought he was a brilliant addition to the cast, and I hope he does stick around if they do a season three. It did uh, make me want to yeah, start looking at them fans. I need to get me one. No, no, you man. cannot roll around your neighborhood with a van. You oh. cannot. Don't, dude. Don't cause no attention. No, that shit is coming, Jay. A lot of people are going to be reduced to van life, bro, with the situation mm -hmm. of uh, housing prices and. Uh, these, these yeah. I think it's gonna level out. I think the the price is just gonna have like for this some is on, people, for some yeah, people, for yeah. Some. But like, not I, the majority, bro. I, mean, I don't know many. I don't know many single mothers with two children, three children that's gonna be able to pay, you know, seventeen to twenty two hundred, and that's gonna be the norm across the country. I don't think it stays there for long, though. It's gonna be enough to to weed out the week. Yeah, yeah. And it's we a just lot gotta of make it through. It's a lot of week. It's a lot of week. So I don't even want to call them. So I, I did like the fact that they talked about housing on here and the unhoused. So that was pretty. 
the unhoused. That was another thing too. I didn't know I was supposed to stop calling them homeless. Man, y'all gotta, y'all gotta like do something <laughs> where we make these words and stuff where I'm not supposed to be saying it. Uh, like make it. Wait, we can't call people homeless no more. That's homeless? what they were saying. We're not homeless. We're unhoused. I was like, oh god. Yeah. All right. No, that's what I you just... call the folks in Cali who live in their cars and stuff like that. You on the street, you home. <laughs> is bum still okay? Is bum, can I just get say bum? Wasn't it wasn't it a clothing line too? No, was it? All right, are we done? Well, is we finished or is we done? <laughs> All right, my bad. Is we finished or is we is done? we done? I'm just saying, bro. Oh Yo. no, man. All I know is go watch some shit. <laughs> True View Podcast. A bunch of different views. (laughs) (laughs) Your boys keep it real, man. I really like listening to them, man. They funny. (laughs) Son of it. They really speak their truth. What the hell was that? (laughs) Your, your, your. <laughs> what are we going? We gonna knock this Nicholas Cage out? Yeah, we can do that. Time, huh? Man. The time, man. Recording. The what? You're still, still recording. recording. Oh still shit! Damn, G.